Hello and welcome to our lesson on creating queries and reports in a database. So we've looked at tables in a database and how to manipulate the information that the end user is going to enter into this database. But ultimately, you want to manipulate the actual data that has been entered. So now you've got all the information. Now you will need to do something with it. You need to process the information. And part of this is creating something called a query. Now, query is a function or an object that we use to extract information from our table. So, for instance, you all have databases on your cell phones. You've got all your contacts. And if you want to phone somebody and their name starts with a C, for instance, you would click on, on my phone at least, you would click on the drop, on the little arrow, and you would click on C, and all the names will come up that start with a C, or that has a C in it. What you've actually done is you've run a query on your database. You've asked your table a question, and it responded by giving you some output and showing you all the names starting with a C. So we're going to do that in Access now. Uh, let's have a look at the database that we have here. We already have some objects, tables, queries, forms, reports. We spoke about this in previous lessons. And now we're going to create our own query. To do this, you're going to select the Create tab. And then you'll see your query section over here. You've got two options, Query Wizard and Query Design. I prefer using the Query Design um, as I can make all the changes to the settings. Uh, but it's really up to you if you want to use the wizard please feel free. So I'm going to select Query Design. And the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add the table or the query that you want to base your query on. In most instances, you'll use a table. So I'm going to add the table once. You'll see it appear here in the background. And then you can close this window. So now you've got your table with your field names at the top and you've got a detail section here at the bottom. So here you're going to add all the fields that you want to show or that you want to use in your query. So for instance, I would like to know how many of my contacts actually use Facebook. So I'm going to add, I'm going to double click on name, double click on surname, and you'll see it, uh, the computer will start inserting the fields here at the bottom of the screen. Alternatively, you can also click in the cell here, click on the drop down, and then select the field from this list. Okay, so I'm obviously also going to add social networks because I want to see a specific social network here. Right, so let's have a look. We've added three fields from the table, table my contacts, that's inserted automatically. You can also sort your information if you wanted to. So I'm going to sort my information according to surname. I'm going to sort it in alphabetical order, so that's ascending, and that's easy to remember. If ever you get confused, ascending starts with an A, alphabetical starts with an A, and the other one's the other one, the, the descending one. Okay, right. Then you've got a row here that says show, and all of them will be ticked by default. So this means that when you run your query, when you extract your information, you want to see all those uh, fields in your query. You don't have to show all of them. Uh, for instance, you don't have to show the social network. It's still part of your query, and we're still going to add criteria to it, but you don't necessarily have to show that column when you run the query. Um, that's where naming conventions come in. So you would rather save the query as Facebook contacts, for instance, instead of having to show that uh, column in your query. For now, I'm going to leave it there so we can actually see the result. The next row says criteria. So here you can go and add criteria, just like you did with your cell phone. You uh, clicked on C or you pressed the C button and all the names with C came up. In the same way here, you can specify criteria for each one of these fields. Okay, so I'm interested in the social network, so I'm going to move my cursor to social networks and I'm going to type in Facebook because I want to see all those people who are on Facebook. Okay, you'll see if I move to the cell just underneath it, the computer will automatically put in the quotation marks for you. If you don't need to put in the quotation marks, then don't do it, because if you don't do it correctly, you're going to get error messages. So in Office 2010, you can just type in your characters, and then the computer will put in the quotation marks. Okay, 
Right. So now we've told the computer exactly what we want. We want to see the name and the surname of all the people that have Facebook. And now we need to run the query. We actually need to go and ask the table the question. So right at the top of your screen on your design tab, you'll see there's a red exclamation mark for running your query. So I'm going to run my query. And there are my results. Okay, so I've got four people who have Facebook accounts. So you see there's Facebook, there's Facebook, there's Facebook, there's Facebook. So you can actually check your query as well to make sure that it's correct. Um, obviously, it's not going to show all the records. It will only show the ones that actually meet the criteria. And you can see here at the bottom of your screen, it says record four of four. And sometimes in exams or in tests, they will ask you how many of your friends have Facebook accounts or whatever. And you can just look at the bottom of your screen here and you can take down the answer. Okay, right. When we save a query, usually I just close the query by clicking on the X. Okay, do you want to save the changes? Yes. And now remember that there is a naming convention. You don't have to use it. And please, use whatever the teacher asks you, whatever the paper asks you to do. So I usually put in QRY to indicate that it's a query. And then give it a useful name so, or a, a meaningful name. So I'm going to put in Facebook so that I know this is the query that extracts all the Facebook um, candidates for me. And then select OK. You'll see that the query will be displayed on the right, left-hand side of your screen together with the other queries that have already been created. Right, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, an object called a report. Now, a report is generally used when you want to print out information from your database. If we were just to open up our table, which I'll quickly do, let's quickly open up the table and look at this, um, it's not very readable, it's not very user-friendly, it's just a table with stuff in it. So you actually want some kind of format to give it a proper layout before you print it out and before you hand it out to people. And that's where your report comes into play. So we're going to create a report now. And to do this, you select the Create tab on your ribbon. And with this one, you'll see report the report section over here. And this is the one time where I'm going to say, use the wizard. Okay, so it just makes your life so much easier. And you can go make changes to it afterwards. Okay, so we're going to select report wizard now. And the wizard will appear. And then read your screen. If you can read the screen, you're going to be okay. So, firstly, you have to choose which table or query you're going to base your report on. I'm just going to base it on the table. And then it's going to show us all these um, fields that you can add as well. Okay, so I'm going to add the name and the surname, and I'm going to add the uh, field invite to charity event. That was a yes, no field. So I want to see uh, who I should invite to my charity. And I could also add perhaps an email address so that I can email them if I want to invite them. So you have to add your fields, then go to the next screen. Okay, now the computer uh, access is going to ask you if you want to group anything. And this is a very useful feature because now you can group your information. In this case, I'm definitely going to group it on invite to charity event. So it will group all those who said yes or all those that I want to invite. It will, it will group that in one section and then it will group the rest of the people just underneath that, all the no's in another section. Right. And then we've got sorting. Please don't get confused with grouping and sorting. Just read carefully. If it says group, you use group. If they say sort, then you're going to use sort. So here you can click on the drop down, and I'm going to sort according to surname. It is in ascending order, which is alphabetical, so you can just leave that. If you were to click on it, it would change to descending. You'll see that the second text box now opens up. It doesn't mean that you have to use it. It's just available if you wanted to add a second sort to your table or to your report. Right, let's go to the next step. This has to do with the layout of your report. Here you can change your orientation from portrait to landscape, um, and you can use different layouts depending on what the question is. Okay, the title of your report is what is going to appear right at the top of your report. And obviously you can't just say table my contact, contacts. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to write in or put in invitations, and then I'm going to finish my report. Okay, it will open up in print preview. 
just going to see if I can zoom out a bit. There we go. And you're going to have to play around with the layout. As you can see, uh, the email address has been cut off. Um, so you're going to have to go to design view and just neaten everything up by making your little text boxes smaller and moving your objects around on your, on your page. All right, so to get to our design view, uh, you can either just close print, view, print preview up here or you can right click on your report and select uh, design view. I'm going to close print preview. And this is your design view. Okay, and it looks a bit hectic. It's got all different sections. But just once again, read from the top and you'll see what's going on here. So firstly, we've got the report header. We've got our page headers, which is the uh, labels for your different columns. We've got the grouping, invite to charity, yes or no. And then we've got the detail section where you would actually have the information appear on your screen. Okay, we're also now going to add a calculation to this report. So not only is it used to create a document that you can print out, but you can also add some calculations in your report here. What is important now is to know that you can only add a calculation in a footer section, uh, or in the report footer section, or in one of your group footer sections, not in the page footer. Okay, if you're going to add something in the page footer, it's not going to work. So there's two ways of doing this. You'll see at the moment we don't have anything in report footer. So I'm going to make this slightly bigger. And then I'm going to go to my design tab on my report design tools. And I'm going to go look for my controls. There's my controls, a little spanner and hammer. And to insert a calculation, we're going to use something called a text box. Now, a text box consists of two components, a label and a text box. And the text box is where you would add your, your calculations. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag it into my report footer section. So there's your label, and there's your text box where you're going to add your, uh, uh, your function. Okay, we can just separate the two here, and you can add a proper label if you wanted to. I'm going to quickly add a calculation here. So I want to know how many people do I have on this list. Whether they're coming or not coming, we're going to look at that in a minute. I'm just going to count the number of records. So this is similar to Excel. You're going to start with equals, and you're going to type in count, open your brackets. But now we're working with fields. In Excel, you would now go and highlight a range of data, but here we're working with individual fields. So you have to put in a block bracket, and then I'm going to go and count all the surnames and close the brackets, press enter. Nothing's going to happen on your screen just yet. You'll see the result of this in your print preview or in your report view. So let's quickly go have a look at uh, the print preview. And there's our answer. We've got six people in this report. Okay, also note, when we did the grouping, we grouped according to whether we should invite them or not. And the computer put that in as a true or false. So true is yes and false is no. And, okay, now we've got the total here. But now, we're interested in seeing how many um, invitations we need to send out. So we actually want to do a calculation for each one of the groups. So I've got to count how many trues there are, or how many yeses, and how many noes. Okay, now, there is a long, complicated way to do this. Let me just open this up again. I'm going to show you the short way to do this. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to go to your detail section. I'm just going to scroll across. Okay. So here, or just above your detail section. Sorry, to your invite to charity event header. And you're going to click on that. When you click on that, you'll see on your design tab, you've got a totals section here, or command button that's going to become available to you. If this was something that um, was like a monetary value, like a donation amount, for instance, you would have sum and average and maximum available to you as well. Okay, so you click on the field name in the header section, and then we're going to select, okay, let's count the records. And the computer will automatically insert the calculation for you. Okay, what is important though is that you still need to know how to write out that calculation in your theory papers. 
Okay, we're also now quickly going to move over to Open Office. So I'm going to close Microsoft Office. I'm going to save my changes, yes. And let's quickly move to Open Office. Right, so same thing here. On the left-hand side, we've got our different objects. There's my query. You once again have the option between Query Design and Query Wizard. I'm not going to do it in detail, but let's just open up the wizard so you can quickly have a look at it. It's very similar to your um, Office 2010. You're going to select a table. You're going to select your different fields that you want to add. Uh, let's quickly add donation amount. Uh, you can sort as well. You can do some of your criteria. You can already put in on these uh, on the pop-up that we have in front of us now. Uh, you can also add um, a summary to your query, some kind of function if you wanted to. Okay, and then let's quickly have a look at this. Right, so here's our query. It already runs the query, so we're not in design view at the moment. To get to design view, you're going to close this, go to your query that you just created, right click on your query and select edit. Okay, so that's slightly different. You're going to select edit, and now you're going to see something similar to what you have in Office 2010. You're going to have your field, your table, you can sort it if you wanted to, and here you can add criteria as well, just like we did with the yes, no, with the invitation, or with a specific amount for the donation amount here. You could say, show me all of those that have donated more than 200, so your criteria would be greater than 200, for instance. Okay. When it comes to reports in Open Office, it's a slightly different story. You'll need to make sure that you install something called an extension. Okay, and the one that I used was the Oracle Report Builder. So I'll show you where to find that. Okay, I'm not going to save my queries here. Okay, you're going to go to Tools. You're going to select Extension Manager. So here's the one that I installed previously. If you don't see this, you'll need to go to Get More Extensions and you'll just need to install it um, to actually do your uh, reports properly. Okay, once you have the extension, you can just go to Reports and you can use your report wizard to create a report. It's very user-friendly and you can just follow the on-screen prompts to create your reports. Okay, and that concludes our lesson on how to create queries and reports in databases. Thank you.